Hello and welcome to Lucian's video tutorial series. In this video we'll be covering the naming options feature, which you use to automate the way that you name your files. Now before we begin we want to emphasize the importance of being consistent in the way that you name your files. Not just you, but you and everybody in your office. It's very important that you be able to predict what a file name is going to be before you're even looking for it. That's going to make it much easier to be able to find your files. Not only that, it's very, very important that your file names contain enough information so that you can identify the file even outside of its cabinet context. For example, suppose you run across a file on a thumb drive. You need to be able to look at that file and understand exactly what that file is based on the information in the file name. Now, File Sender's naming options feature is a way to automate all of this. In fact, you're going to find that it's faster and easier to name your files with complete, consistent information in the file names than it was typing it out manually. In fact, you'll often be naming your files with just one or two mouse clicks. Now let's delve into the naming options feature so that you can see how all of this works. To start things off, let's take a look at a naming option in action. I have a file selected here in my cabinet. Let's rename this file. Now in File Center, anytime that you see a file name field, you're going to notice over on the right side this drop arrow. This drop arrow shows you your naming options. Now naming options are just predefined file names. You might think them of them as uh, file name templates. I've only got one set up here right now. And this one is very typical of the kinds of file name formats that we see among a lot of our customers. Uh, just very briefly, it starts off with a date in the year, month, day format. The reason for this is a lot of businesses need their files to be organized in the order of the, of the date that the file was created. And this is going to accomplish that. Uh, why not use the uh, Windows date, the date modified, or the date created over here? Well, those dates can change. But if you put it right there in your file name, it's never going to change. And you'll make sure that you've always got your files organized by date. And then we often see the customer or the client or the patient name. And notice that this was generated automatically also. It came off of the drawer name over here. And then finally, the type of document that it is. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to say OK. And now look, this file has now been renamed with all of that information in it. And notice that all it took was one mouse click to name that file with a great deal of rich information so that I can now look at that file and know exactly what it is. Let's, so, let's show you how to set up a naming option that will accomplish this. Now naming options are created from the naming button right here on the main toolbar. Here you'll see a list of all of your naming options. You can reorder them, you can add more, you can remove them from here. We're going to add one. Now for this naming option that we're about to create, we're going to follow the same convention that we used in that last example we saw. In other words, we're going to start with a date, and then we're going to have the name of the client, patient, or customer, and then the document type after that. Now, it's not necessary that you follow this convention. What matters is you come up with something that works very well for the way that you work. Now, to begin with the date, you notice we've got three different date options here. We're going to use the date today. Now, the date created and modified options right there, I'll just briefly mention, uh, those are really only useful when you're renaming a file that already exists. You can pull the Windows created or modified date out of the file and use that in your file name. But we're going to use the date today. Now, notice over here that as I selected that, we've got a lot of different uh, date formatting options. And these are explained over here on the right-hand side. But we're going to pick the one that has a four-digit year, followed by a two-digit month and a two-digit day so that things sort properly. And I'm going to insert that into my expression. And I'm just going to pause to briefly note that you can come up with your own formats if you don't see one that's on the list. You can just use these same indicators, which are explained over here on the right, and you can actually come down here into this field that was just created here. By the way, this is my file name that's being developed right here in this field. And I can come and you can actually just delete items, type items in, and modify things as you want to. Well, what I've done is I've now just inserted a field into my file name. So my example now, my file name is going to start with a date. After my date, I wanted to include a client name. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to type a, a comma because I like to have a comma separating my date 
and uh, from the client's name. And now I'm going to come over here to the folder name field. Now we're going to come back in a minute and talk about these folder options because these can be a little bit confusing. But you'll notice that the first one is the drawer. What this will do is this will pull the name of the drawer and stick it here into my file name. So I'm going to insert that into my expression. So now I have a date, I've put a comma, and now I'm going to have my drawer name there. And now I'm going to put a dash there, just another way of separating elements in the file name. It's good to be able to differentiate between the different elements. And now I'm just going to type in uh, a little bit of information. I'm going to say that this is a, a letter, a letter from the client. Okay, and I'll stop right there. So I've got a few elements in my file name now. I have a dynamic date, I have a dynamic client name, and then it will always have this text here, letter from. Let's click OK. Now I'm going to close here, and uh, let's rename this file right here so that you can see the way that this works. Now let's come up here to the Files menu and rename this file. And there we go. Now you see that I've got two naming options. The one that we just created is in there, and it's right here, this letter from. It picked up the date, picked up the name of the client off of the drawer name. Those were the two dynamic fields, and then it's got the text, letter from, right there. So if I select that and click OK, there we go. File was just renamed. And I could use these also when I'm saving files, for example, out of Microsoft Word. If I'm using the File Center Save and Open integration, then in my File Center Save Open dialog box, the file name field there is going to have my naming options, so I can quickly and easily name files with really just a couple of mouse clicks. Now let's go back and talk about a few of the other fields that you can use in your naming options. Now, up here in the General option, we've got a few options here. The first is Original Name. Now, this again only comes to bear when you're renaming files. When you're renaming files, you can take the original file name and include that in your naming option to generate a new name from that, and that's often very useful. We've also got the username and computer name, and those come from Windows. This is the Windows username. In other words, it's the login name that you type when you log into your computer, and then the computer name is actually the name of the computer. Those can be useful for inserting staff initials or staff names inside of file names. But what we want to talk about right now is uh, the folder names. Let's revisit this. Now, we mentioned we've got the drawer name, that which we already saw. We've also got these level 1 and level 2 options. And down here below, you're going to see the parent options, parent 1, parent 2, parent 3. Here's the way that those work. Here's one of my naming options that I created right here. Here I've got the drawer name with folder level 1 and folder level 2. That matches these up here. Let's create a second naming option that examines the, uh, the parent folder names right there. Let's do that really quick. And parent 3 we insert. Okay. So now we've got two. We've got one that shows the parent options. We've got one that shows that drawer and level one, level two. Let's come over here to a file now and see the way that those play out. Okay, here was my first one. This is the one that had the drawer and the level one and the level two. And look at the way that this worked. The drawer we've already seen is going to grab the name of the client over here from the drawer. But then the level 1 matches this folder over here, the Documents folder. And level 2, Drafts, matches this folder over here. So you can see with these folder options, you can grab the names of any folder. Now let's look at this one down here. This is the one that used Parent 1, Parent 2, and Parent 3. Parent 1 is the folder that the file is actually sitting in. Parent 2 was the folder above that, which is Documents. And then parent 3 comes back to the, uh, to the drawer itself. Now, these different folder options are going to accommodate a lot of different filing structures. If you use the name of your 
uh, of your client or your patient or your customer in your drawer or any of those folders and you do it consistently, you can use these different folder options to pull the name of that, that client or patient or customer right out and stick it in your file names or any other information that you use in your folder layouts. It's really a very powerful option and not too tough once you get a sense for how it's, uh, how it's organizing things. Now I'm back in my naming options editor and I've pulled up that naming option that we created earlier, this letter from option, because I want to add one more thing to it. I want to add an increment. The auto increment option is important to be able to understand. You use this anytime that you may have more than one file that uses exactly the same name. With the increment option, File Center will automatically place a number at the ends of those file names. And let's see how this works. I'm going to select this increment right here and insert this into my expression and notice that it shows up over here on the end. Now, when I use this naming option, File Center is going to automatically append a number to the file. And it's going to do this based on whether or not there are other files in the, in the directory that have the same name. And it will automatically put the next number in the series. Let's just go ahead and take this for a spin to see how it works. Back here I've got some documents. Let's rename the first one. Let's pull up that naming option. Okay, there we go, the letter from. And notice that now there's a 01 at the end of this. File Center has put that there automatically. Let's rename the second one in the series. And this time, that's a 02. And let's go one more time. And there's our increment and we've got the 03. So hopefully you can now see how easy and how powerful consistent file naming can be through File Center's naming options feature. Now we have one more aspect of naming options to explore still and that is File Center's custom lists which let you bring in a lot of predefined elements for file names. Uh, be sure to check that out in the second part of the naming options tutorial.